Hello and welcome to the Great Shrimp Shoal. Today we'll be going to ground and looking at the new shrimp in both the forest and the mountains and how they are faring. Things are moving along quite nicely for them, but is there anything that we can do to help make these new shrimp as healthy and as happy as possible? Also, how many worms is just too many? The forest's worm problems may have been tipping out of control. In the forest, things have been looking up. The matriarch of that community is still alive and she's eating and moving around the tank along with the fry that she gave birth to not long ago. It must feel good to have some friends to forage with after months that she's spent alone. However, her coloring looks a bit washed out and muted, so it could be that she's stressed in some way. She's also been holding on to the most recent clutch of eggs for a long time now with no males in the tank to pair with. I don't know enough about that part of shrimp reproduction and anatomy. For example, what happens to a female shrimp who doesn't have a mate for months and months at a time? My very first red cherry shrimp may also be able to shed some light on that scenario. She was a solitary matriarch for a long while as her colony died out, and although I couldn't see through her carapace, I did spot shadows from time to time that revealed that she still carried a saddle up until the days that she died. Technically, the saddle is the full reproductive organ that holds the eggs prior to fertilization, and you can see here our jade green cherry shrimp matriarch has her saddle still. If my timing is correct, it would be about now that the eggs would be moved if they were fertilized, so I'll have to watch out and see what happens to her in the next few weeks. Taking all that into consideration, now may be a good time to bring in some new adult community members, especially when this tank is moved, which I plan to do soon. The new adult shrimp will diversify the community and the shrimpy genetic pool, even if it is just a little. That should lead to some healthier shrimp babies in the short term, at least in theory. Speaking of babies, I am super jazzed that so many of the baby shrimp survived the one month mark and are now growing solidly into the juvenile stage. As I said before, they're looking a lot more like shrimp now, with a defined silhouette, and you can even see their claws as they pluck food off of the substrate. These little guys and gals are so cute. But with all the cuteness comes a dark side. In the forest, there has always been a darkness here to answer to the light. Worms. A ton of worms that are completely absent in the other tanks that I've kept. I don't know if they came in with one of the three substrates that I used in this tank or one of the plants, but nevertheless, they are here to stay for the time being. These detritus worms are becoming a bit too much. They're all over and don't seem to be getting any less prolific. With the algae clumps absolutely disappearing, the bloom of algae came back, and with it, the floating worms that just tumble around the tank for hours on end. I was fortunate enough to catch a worm floating right into the feeding fry and adult shrimp during this filming. It did stay still for a second, as if it was judging whether or not it landed on suitable ground. But the fry got bumped by the worm and everyone did a double take hopping to the side for a second. It was interesting to study this interaction because for the most part they've kept to their separate spaces as far as I could tell. When these baby fry first hatched, I saw dozens and dozens of detritus worms poking up from the substrate, and I wondered at the time what it must be like to be a baby fry wandering around in the dark with the tendrils of worms pushing up all over the ground. Just thinking about it for a minute brought horrific images to mind and made my skin crawl. However, now that I know so many of the fry survived their formative days, I'm sure that they paid no mind to the detritus worms down below. 
The fry are just about at the stage where they're going to start eating the same things that their parents do, and that means that when the food pellet for this community is dropped into the tank, I can count on the fry to come along for the feeding as well. This makes observing them a lot more easy. Pretty much every member showed up over the course of this filming session. As I said last week, their color is a bit muted and washed out, like their parents' carapace is now. But baby shrimp will eventually grow darker in color as they develop their pigment cells. Baby shrimp are mostly transparent when they are born, and I can't help but think that this serves as a great defense mechanism because, after all, what fish or predator could spot a crystal clear shrimp against a rocky planted background of varying colors? There's not much left to do with this tank. I'm going to do some more cleaning of the water, make sure that the filter and filter pad are cleaned out, and lastly, make sure that the nutrient levels in the tank water are at their stable levels, before leaving this tank unattended for a week or so to see how things turn out. I think that that should give me a good idea of how many of these little fry are going to be around for the long haul. We'll also see if we can add a handful of adult shrimp to this tank as well, to even out the community. Over in the 30 gallon tank containing the mountains, it has been tricky spotting the fry. But there are juvenile shrimp and adults all over the place, so they seem to be growing up just fine. There are a handful of each level of shrimp though, and I have no adult deaths in quite some time. So I think that it's safe to say that after a certain point in development, the going gets easy and the baby shrimp are more likely to have survived. I haven't seen a group of 12 fry like I do in the forest though, and that is saying something because unlike in the forest, the number of egg laying females I have here is much, much bigger. After all, almost anything is bigger than one. So with six to seven female shrimp, I could have easily seen 50 plus fry swarming on the substrate, but I don't. Clearly that has never happened and I don't expect it to. The conditions in the forest were just right to support that female's entire clutch of eggs. Overall, there must be something limiting early development in the mountains for the snowball shrimp babies. I'm going to continue treating the water with Bacter AE to try and get the biofilm concentrations up. The Java Moss continues its march over the surface of the volcanic rock. It is an amazing thing to watch week after week. I pretty much let it grow out of control until it's time to trim all at once. You can see that it starts out leggy at the bottom of the rock, and as the moss approaches the surface it branches out more often, creating a thicker tree-like structure. This is true of most aquatic plants, including moss, and it helps the plant to conserve energy as it grows towards the sunlight and increased nutrients. It's not something that I've filmed often, but the tallest mountain hides a network of holes that I chose not to seal up when I was creating the hardscaping for this tank. A shrimp can move through the bottom of the tower straight up and out through the holes at the top. I haven't had any issues with shrimp getting stuck or dying inside the tunnels, but I have seen the shrimp resting near the openings and inside of them as well. I have even seen the bamboo shrimp crawl through one of the tunnels, and each of them are many times the size of an adult Neocaridina shrimp, so that is saying something. You have to be pretty confident as a shrimp to stuff yourself into a tiny hole not knowing if you're going to be able to get out again. Also taking into account that these bamboo shrimp are all fans and whiskers, it adds an element of risk for them to crawl through a confined space. So you have to give it to them for at least trying and being confident enough to pull through. Here is a good look at a perspective that I haven't captured much for this tank. From the left side, across the front of the glass, you get a clear view of the entire tank, including the feeding grounds in the front and the sponge filter in the back right corner. You also get the moss, most of the tallest mountain, and all of the different plants all in one shot. 
It's really amazing. It also probably says a lot about where I was in my progression of the hobby when I planted this tank, that it looks best when taken in all at once. Like, maybe I could have done with a smaller tank and used most of the same elements in a smaller horizontal space. Either way, all the stuff is here and it looks good together, so that is a bonus. Speaking of bonuses, planning, setting up tanks, and my progression in the hobby, I have some new elements that I've been gathering for the new tank, and one of the most important items just arrived this week. I have been wowed by the growth of the moss here in the mountains, so I procured a giant portion of a type of moss adjacent to java moss. Now, to be honest, I don't know exactly what type of moss it actually is. This is in part because moss of different types look exactly the same under certain conditions. Like java moss and peacock moss can look the same under low light growth conditions. So with that being said, I do think the moss that I have looks like java moss but only if it was grown in a really good condition. It has tons of branches and a uniform leaf structure with nice green coloration. Overall, it looks really nice when the light hits it just right, so I'm going to have to be selective about where I place it in this new tank that I have. Right now, I'm doing my due diligence and quarantining it away from the shrimp and my tanks for a while to let it grow out, and to see if there's any hidden snail eggs. Moss like this is absolutely notorious for bringing hitchhikers with them when they're introduced to new tanks or waterways. Home aquariums are not immune to this, so I may do a quick salt bath to try and get some of the smaller hidden stuff as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick update on the two tanks that I have. I'm going to finalize the rest of the hardscaping for this new third tank this week and get the planting done if I can. Hopefully I'll have an update for you on that soon, maybe even before the next planned video. As always, I hope that you have some sweet shrimpy dreams before we meet next. Dream of caves and rocks covered with mossy tendrils and herds of shrimp tending to the greenery. I'll see you guys next time. Good night. <laughs>